I am recording and I'm with Surreal. How are you, Surreal? I'm doing well. How are you? I am. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, man. So we were yeah. just saying, right? It's been, uh, it's been a few years since we saw each other. Did you say five years? I think it's about, because it's been three years since my heart surgery. Hmm. So, so it's at least before that, but hmm. be four years. Yeah, it's crazy how time flies, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how are you? How are you doing in general? How's your health? How's family? Everything is good? Everything's good. I'm in my research campus in Alibag right now, which is about 20 minutes from home. It's like an island resort kind of a place. So we have a little facility here. Mm. So I'm operating out of here right now. And we come here every weekend. It's uh, you. Say, sorry, there's a little bit of uh, uh, background noise. I'm just trying to see if it might have been on my side. Um, but yeah. But anyway, so that's cool. It's an island. Is that what you were showing me pictures of like a long time ago? I think you were. Yeah, showing... yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So it's built now. Nice. Yeah, it's ready. Nice. Cool. Right. <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> it was just like a little model or something. I remember seeing some yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let, let, let's maybe talk to let's talk about that. Um, but let's I mean, if, if you're okay with it, let's maybe start with, yeah. uh, you know, I know you and I we've had uh, an interesting, you know, set yeah. of stories, maybe ourselves that we can maybe share, but, but really, really curious, or like kind of what, what does and I don't even know if I, I really know, um, now that I ask is, you know, what's kind of your, your, your story, you know, before us meeting at that <laughs> event in the global Bitcoin conference in Bangalore? <laughs> so, I mean, I was in my office and I was uh, researching on, you know, at that time, SpaceX and all had just come out in 2000. I, I was researching about SpaceX. Hey, he's really, uh, sorry, sorry, man. I, I'm going to pause it real quick, but you're, you, I'm getting a lot of static in your background. Let's try the other one again. Let's see if that's better. Let's try your. Yeah, that's actually way better. Okay, so yeah, let's go. You yeah. just turned into like you went from Bruce Wayne to Batman. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Can you repeat that? I, I just missed you for a bit. Okay. Continue your story. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I this one. Time. No. Now it's even worse. I'm gonna pause it again. But okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. We're back now. Sorry about that. Okay. But yeah. Go. So... Go ahead. So I was just like, you know, uh, curious about the whole space and tried to go through the forum. I mean, I didn't understand a single word in the forum, <laughs> except, you know, when there were some uh, posts about, you know, just general topics about politics and stuff like that. I follow that. And, and then while browsing, I at some point found about your conference in Bangalore. And by then I had done some research. So, and I think it was a pretty expensive conference considering the time it was in, you know, it was, I think it was about 10,000 rupees, which is, which is not a cheap conference for Indian standards, you know? And I, I was like, okay, let's just go and check it out. And, you know, I, I, and uh, I just, uh, I got this, perm I mean, I, got, I had to get it approved by my law firm. And uh, so I just decided to fly in. And at that point, I, I just knew a few things about Bitcoin, but not too much. And I still don't know much, you know, like I'm still, you know, uh, I'm not an expert in Bitcoin, even though I've, dealt with it on the legal front of it, but you know, like if, uh, if I have to explain it and like, you know, like when, when I hear other speed people explain it, I'm not able to do justice to it as much as I would like to. And, uh, yeah, that's how my journey started. And then I met you guys, you and Satwik and Harish and, and then, uh, you were on your way back to, Canada, I think, at that point, 
and we had the CFO of Butterfly Labs with us. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was his name? And I just. Decided- I forgot. No, it's some guy. Yeah, yeah, Josh or something. I, I forget. Yeah, Butterfly and, Labs. I remember some, yeah. that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we went to my friend's cafe, the Cool Chef Cafe. It was like in a dingy part of Bombay. It was like in Burley, in a little slum area. And then we decided to have a meetup there. And uh, I still get picked. <laughs> I remember that. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is what where are we? December? And, no, this is 2013 or 2014? Yeah, t- 2013. 2013 December October December like right around the conference time. I think right after the I think right the, after oh, right it was you and I flew from Bangalore to Bombay together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I met a whole bunch of people you know and uh, for me it was exciting you know like uh, uh, I remember giving 500 rupees to one guy so he told me that he was going to give me bitcoins but he never did at the conference <laughs> and... <laughs> so that who was is this guy experience of getting... <laughs> I don't want to take his name because I know him <laughs> <laughs> but I remember the incident. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so wait, uh, that 500 rupees uh, worth of Bitcoin, though, how much would that be worth today? <laughs> Don't forget it, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that. That was probably like one Bitcoin. No, no, I think that was yeah, when yeah. actually, no, the, when we did the event, each Bitcoin was like a thousand dollars. I think no, I remember no, no, no. it was like no, the no, hype. No, or, it was, no? It was like, I think it was, it was like just, 10, it was like 10, 12 dollars. <laughs> Oh, the Lord. Max. okay, so yeah, some, someone owes you some serious <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> so, okay, okay, so anyways, so, okay, I was, I was going to ask you, so what was that experience like, though, like actually meeting, like, so learning about this geeky kind of tech that resonated a bit, that was confusing, but then, you know, being in a room where, you know, it was a bit expensive, but but being in a room <laughs> nonetheless with other humans... <laughs> It, like had you done was, a lot of that because you seem like you do a lot of like you seem like you do a lot of a lot of, like similar type of stuff like leading edge tech you said spacex earlier etc etc et yeah, so, so I, I, back then i used to be a conference junkie so i would just attend any random there you conferences go. too you know like a complete conference junkie you know like i would just go from conference to conference like i attended one conference which was on prenatal sounds and it was meant this <laughs> is random you know it's so random okay okay and okay it was meant for auditory uh students who study you know for the years and the sounds and stuff like that and i found it interesting and i went and attended that and and so for me going to a conference is very easy you know and uh I even remember that when it was the conference was covered in Economic Times in India, and it ha- it so happened that they captured my picture and they put it up, which which I found it fascinating because immediately after the conference, uh, on I think thirteenth or fourteenth of December, is when RBI first came up, the Reserve Bank of India first came out with its notification against bitcoins <laughs> so go- uh, 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 okay and uh, and uh, i think we had come and we were planning on writing this research paper and submitting it to the authorities and boom this thing comes out of nowhere and uh, Within a month, you know, for they they went and uh, sealed all the bit seized all the Bitcoin companies and their accounts, and uh, uh, I we had my law firm had already done the research on Bitcoins and we had already said that it's not illegal per se to own Bitcoins in India at that time. We had taken a position, and. Uh, 
we were in a crisis, you know, the whole industry had come to a standstill and everyone was panicking, what's going to happen, you know, I think there were a couple of pe uh, people taken in for interrogation by the enforcement directorate and it was a pretty serious situation. And uh, we needed to get a big lawyer to come and take a stance for the Bitcoiners, you know. And so I and my team briefed my dad about it. And my dad was like, all right, you know, we can either write a, a letter or, and make a case and send it to the officials and tell them all this, which would take about six months. So for six months, it would be, the business would be at a standstill, you know, and or we could call a press conference and I can make a statement and, you know, talk about the whole Bitcoin and explain Bitcoin to the press at large. And once it comes in the mainstream press, uh, you know, there's a, uh, so we ended up calling a press conference where we invited almost everyone from Bloomberg to CNBC to the Indian channels and all of that, all the news reporters who are on our <clears throat> list. And uh, we had a press conference and convened and we had a couple of the, at that time there was this idea of setting up the Bitcoin Alliance of India, BAI. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so some of the representatives from that came and they explained Bitcoin in their own way. And then at the end, my dad comes up on the podium and he's like, you know, Bitcoins per se are not illegal in India. And he went on and gave his old spool. And the next thing you know, all the newspapers in India are carrying the headline, you know, Bitcoin's not illegal, says Nishit Desai, you know. And... We were, and and then the next thing is that we get calls from the Reserve Bank, we get calls from the Enforcement Directorate and uh, uh, things like that, you know. And and but but as soon as the statement came out, at least the exchanges were back in business. So that's how my story with Bitcoin started, you know, and. Uh, and then we were, you know, every, every uh, we kept at it, you know, there was that, it was not a lull period, there's a lot of talk about it, but we were doing a lot of things, you know, we were trying to set up the association, we were trying to do a whole bunch of, can we, you know, meeting all the different crypto exchanges and trying to create a, a nodal body which could represent you know, the whole uh, uh, crypto uh, industry in India. And around that time, I think post that, I ended up meeting a whole bunch of people in the crypto industry, you know. Uh, uh, I ended up meeting Brock Pierce because of a conference which was being held in India where he had come to speak. And uh, it was a crazy story with him, you know. And uh, uh, at that time, he told me that, why don't you become the chairman of Bitcoin Foundation India chapter? And we were having discussions about that. And, we were, and I was like, do you really want to set up a foundation in India? You know, it's, it's pretty onerous to have a, any kind of nonprofit in India. You know, it's not that easy to run it. And... Uh, and uh, so that was one thing that happened. And uh, so, I mean, I've had a very interesting scene with the crypto, you know, like I would go for all these meetups and I would meet, I would talk, I would, I would, I, like there was a point in my life where I got so enamored by Bitcoin that I went and put a big sticker of Bitcoin on my Honda Accord, which I had back then. 
and I would drive around the city, you know, and people would be like, who is this guy, you know? It was like, uh, uh, <laughs> and then uh, there came a point in 2016 and I was like, you know, like I was heavily into it and I was out one night and next thing I know is that I wake up with a Bitcoin tattoo on my wrist. <laughs> Do you still have it? Yeah. Can you show me? See how many people have Bitcoin tattoo? Not I don't know anybody. <laughs> There you go. See. <laughs> um. Hey, it's real. So I really appreciate that. That. Um. But I, I was gonna ask you a little bit. So just you know, because there, there's a bit of a global audience, right? And so mm -hmm. um, a lot of people might not know about uh, kind of like your father and the and your uh, uh, kind of like the mm -hmm. I guess the the the. Uh, the The work prior to you know all of this, right? Um, like, do you do you have like a bit of a I don't know, you know what I mean? Like a a little spiel yeah. or whatever in terms of what like what what the elevator pitch for? <laughs> I mean, I I, I oh, sorry, I I regard your father as like one of the most important people, obviously uh you know full stop <laughs> like in the whole kind of bitcoin yeah. thing happening and whatnot i mean us being able to whether it be operating in terms of that right. news uh, press release yeah. to like more recently he's been a monumental player but what i mean maybe i should talk to him at one point that would probably make sense too right in terms yeah, of I like maybe getting right his story now. oh my god that would be crazy is he in front of you oh if he's available that would be insane he's outside he's yeah he is Should I call him? Well, I, yeah, I don't want to intrude, but if you feel comfortable, I mean, I, I wouldn't <laughs> want to stop you. Okay, yeah, I, like I said, I, uh, yeah. yeah just sure, I'll second. pause it. Hello, how are you? Good, good, wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Nice to see you again. How are you? <laughs> Life is good? Yeah, yeah. Long time now. Yes, yes. Life no. is good, yes. Yeah, no, Cyril and I, we were just chatting. I'm doing a podcast now where I'm interviewing people in the Bitcoin space okay. that have had a positive impact on the on the area. And I, I met, you know, and your name obviously came up and I, I told him that I felt like <coughs> you were one of the most important people in terms of everything that's happened. And uh, yeah, and so I have, you know, nothing but respect for you. And so, I, so at that point, Cyril said, hey, why don't I, why don't I bring him? Um, but oh, but no, what the, que the, the question you. the question I was asking him was kind of just uh, I guess you, I mean it's kind of a, a big question but like what what your backstory was before uh, learning about Bitcoin um, you know like your your reputation really precedes itself I know many people know about you um, but but yeah I'm just curious to know I guess from from your side too I mean uh, what your kind of what your story was before and then you know uh, what you saw in Bitcoin so many years ago. Well, actually, let me be frank. It was Cyril who brought Bitcoin. Uh, I never heard of it before. So thanks to him. So he is the real change maker. <laughs> okay. And so as you said, my reputation preceded. His reputation followed. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Beautifully I think said. He came up with that type. Yeah. And uh, as you know, with every technology, with every kind of instrument, uh, there is positive side and negative side. And But my habit is always to see positive. And uh, when he talked about Bitcoin and what I heard, a lot of other stories, but I said, I must give full opportunity of understanding and what is it about. And, you know, so eventually after looking at all the things, I think I said, I must support him and get out of interest so that's how uh, it took a little more time to understand legal implications and there was no legal regime so began to think what it should be like and you know the history you have been also associated with us from almost the start of this whole episode <laughs> that happened in 2012 or 13 or whatever that uh, year was and um Uh, at least one good thing was that we, when I studied, I found there was no illegality attached and, you know, but perception was very different. And uh, we were in the state of preparedness when you all came, you know, and um, it just worked out and it 
went through a lot of uh, ups and downs and uh, you know problems around but eventually supreme court at least cleared it to say and reconfirmed the opinion we gave about 7 8 years ago that it was not illegal i think that is a great landmark judgment and i think in that again uh, besides suril my colleague jaydeep i worked and our whole team has been working we spent enormous amount of time on this particular technology and making sure that people get the benefit of those technology over a period of time and that's why we are interested also partly in the legal side because if it is not allowed then for a long period of time people will never see the benefits and um, you know but it has happened and by the way now <clears throat> we are also looking at a new offshore financial center that has been <clears throat> set up by the government in a place called gandhinagar near in ahmedabad called uh, gandhinagar uh, uh, it's gujarat in uh, invest gujarat it is called gift city uh, gujarat uh, international financial services uh, uh, center and the technology city so we are now trying to see that um, you know you know coin and others can perhaps you know uh, come and set up bases there so at least uh, if you want that uh, 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 that that offshore center is uh, meant to create international businesses there and where government often has apprehension of some type at least this is confined to that zone so they can experience remain with that have a kind of sandbox and uh, if it works well then that can be expanded elsewhere so i think we've been working on that uh, as well and uh, but i think you need to educate a lot of people many of whom have hard core ideas that okay this should not happen and then to convert them into you know a positive side is uh, little challenge but i think it's been working well i think uh, we are very happy and uh, you know now hopefully industry would come of age and move fast forward you know the so industry has to come together now on one platform and uh, you know put some stake in the whole thing as well one of the thing we find is i think industry has been uh, reluctant to invest in their own future in india so i think those are international players who understand the game and of course unokrain has been fabulous i think uh, we cannot deny that I mean, if the industry has survived i think it is also partly because unokrain and a couple of other players but mainly unokrain has been consistent gone through every kind of problem one can visualize whether it was initial problem of raids or later on some police not understanding then some bank not understanding that other thing but steadily it has remained and i think you've been supporter and investor for a long time um so i think i must compliment and give them also some credit for helping to shape the world that you want you know so those will be my comment and uh, i think most important thing as i mentioned i think is industry as a whole needs to come together now and if global industry comes then you can and india is also considered to be kind of a um, jurisdiction which is looked upon by many emerging markets you know we went to uh, uzbekistan they are looking at india because they think that this india does it that means right otherwise sometimes something coming from west is you know imposed upon them so they there are different kind of equations with which they relate but Uh, now if india is moving forward then perhaps you know other countries would be a little easier on and um, as you can see that you know with coins uh, has been getting more and more acceptance and uh, you know uh, it, it may be partly reflected in its rates also market rates but market rate is only one part on the whole people are i think feeling more comfortable with that so let's see how it turns out but um, whatever support you want we are there and uh, most welcome and must thank suril for identifying me hey, uh, yeah well no definitely and yeah i think I, i mean it was almost 
I mean, I don't know, to me, almost magical, the fact that we all came together the way we did, how Surreal came to the event in Bangalore, and he told me about you, and we all met, and, you know, and then what happened with the RBI happened, and and the stance that you took on behalf of the industry with um, a ton of faith. I mean, uh, it was really remarkable Mm -hmm. to us to even see someone of your nature of your, you know, reputation to just put it all on the line for an idea, really. Bitcoin is an idea. It's, it's this code. Um, but uh, but I was really yeah. curious. Like, it, it, so it was, I guess, Surreal is the one to blame then in terms of like uh, your your open-mindedness to, to the whole industry. I, I love it. <laughs> Actually, yeah. No, no. So, Surreal initiated. Initiated. But we all worked together. So be- mm. before uh, you all came, we had studied the subject, you know. Mm. So we had spent a lot of time studying the technology and studying the subject and we had put together a techno legal team including you remember professor dr Mir parik was there and of course. parik was there he's engineer and Mir parik his phd in artificial intelligence and the whole team came together how many people we put together on the team but this was all on our own nobody paid for it but we were ready so when this thing happened we could give opinion at the speed of thought, so to say, that we are very clear in our mind that there was nothing illegal, and you know uh, this has to succeed in the court of law. I think that fortunately everything converged at that point of time. So you know maybe you did the conference in Bangalore, which educated Surreal or initiated Surreal, Surreal initiated us, and then we got other people, and then yeah. over a period of time, it has worked. It has been almost now eight years, uh, 2020, January, that the uh, Supreme Court gave a decision. I think it gave a lot of relief to everyone, you know? I think so. And, and you know, uh, initially, I think a lot of people don't know. So it was actually your team, right? That was even up until, you know, whether it be at the beginning of this whole journey or or recently yeah. in terms of the <laughs> yeah. march, um, yeah. you know, sometimes, sometimes you know, um, things just kind of get glossed over. Yeah. But 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 it is your it's your guys, right, that that eventually that in, uh, eventually fought yeah. this thing in the law, in the court of law. And one, and so, oh, on yeah. behalf of the Bitcoin community, I mean, wow, I, I'm nothing but indebted, forever indebted to you. I, I um, and you know, a lot of the the big uh, international exchange owners, they follow me on Twitter, on here and there, and and hopefully many of them, I'll encourage them to mm-hmm. to watch this video because. Um, but if you could send one message to them, like like I said, you know the big exchange owners around the world, um, you said you're, 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 uh, you see that it's important for us to come together. I guess as a global community, um, yeah. Is that w- w- what might that look like? Is that some sort of like uh, association, or you just mean like just get everyone on some Zoom calls? I mean, um, because but uh, but I do agree with that. But what, how does that look like? Yeah, I think we have to have a platform. Uh, it could be in the form of association. And uh, usually the government, if uh, they are positively inclined or otherwise, they listen to the associations more carefully or more attentively. Or because we are lawyers with a high degree of reputation and because of your own name and brand, therefore we got different level of attention altogether. And um, it happened. But as a, on an ongoing basis, we would suggest that let there be an association set up either in India or overseas for India, whichever way, and uh, we can guide you on that. But uh, that collective force makes a lot of difference. And we are happy to share all of our knowledge, research. For example, we have developed self-regulations for the industry. We have created ecosystem and all that thing. But if, if the association also supports, because ultimately it's, I don't like to call it your and mine, but your problem, correct? So if if we take you, we can take horse to the water, but cannot make it drink. So it would be very useful if the association, even if there are four or five people, it's okay to start with, but have something come together, okay? Then you will be able to make presentations at appropriate forums and, you know, we'll be delighted to guide them. Um, but 
when we go and say, okay, you're a lawyer, but for whom, right? So it will be useful to have a face behind and we can say, this is what we are doing. And they are, they are very credible people in the world. Uh, they operated uh, in the most sophisticated jurisdiction and um, you know, and their experience is very helpful. As you know, we want, we help Mauritius government to develop law and digital asset. You must have, must have heard about it. And mm -hmm. also, um, I think uh, our friend uh, Pushi, that Loretta also later on, I invited and we, I think we just worked together. Whatever it is, right? Everybody has contributed one cent. So we can't take credit for everything, but at least we'll be happy to provide some degree of uh, leadership because ultimately this is what is known as regulatory entrepreneurship. So it's entrepreneurship that is based on whether that activity would be legal or illegal. And th there is a whole um, thesis on regulatory entrepreneurs, as they call. They play on the edges of law, but for the benefit of public, not for their own exploitation to start with, right? So Uber, Airbnb, a drop skiing, these are all the examples where they played on gray areas, like taxi rules were ambiguous. Uber brought in more benefits to public, right? Airbnb rentals, okay, tenancy laws were ambiguous and all that, and they found gray area in which they benefited so many people, if you look at. So like that, you know, we believe that uh, this uh, cryptocurrency and crypto is also a part of the gray areas where the world is still coming to grips, both from legal perspective, from philosophical perspective. It's a decentralized currency and the mindset for the last two centuries have been, everything has to be centralized and now suddenly you're talking decentralized, you know. So they think the power has gone away. And how do you change that mindset, you know? So I think uh, uh, we have a lot of miles to cover and if we are all together in the journey, I think it will make it easier. Yeah, I agree. Hey, and it's just one quick question before I let you go. I, I'm sure you have a, a many other things to do. Um, the mm -hmm. I had a question around P2P platforms such as local Bitcoins and Wazirx. And I'm just curious, Anish, it's like, you know, when you talk about things like Airbnb and Uber, um, mm -hmm. Something like that, you know, um, it, it strikes me as being in line with that ethos of regulatory entrepreneurship. I'm curious, do you have any, do you have any differing thoughts on that? Like, I guess what I'm getting at is, yeah, so yeah, do, do, you, do you think that there, there's a place for those types of platforms um, if in the future, you know, um, central banks around the world are more act like this because obviously uno coin while we were in the end victorious had to go through a period of almost two years where we had to lay off 100 people yeah. you know uh, mm -hmm. we had yeah. it was a very tough time for us but i'm just curious from like a, i know you can't we can't turn back the hands of time but I, I do think a lot about you know that experience and what can we learn from it so i guess that, that was one of my kind of pink elephant questions i'm not gonna lie that i that i had um, do you know what I'm asking? Like a peer-to-peer -peer is where, where let's say one of our buyers on Unocoin settles with one of the sellers uh, directly without us being in the loop. And we just escrow the Bitcoin in between um, where we don't actually hold any of the money in a bank account. Um, so I'm just curious, do you, have you thought, or maybe you haven't explored it that much, but I'm just curious, have you, have you um, explored that model or, or do you have any thoughts on that model? Well, I've not gone much deep into that, but... Um... If fundamentally the transaction is not illegal, mm. okay, that means the holding of crypto, you know, can be in an escrow, can be otherwise, because there's nothing illegal about it. Mm. You know? So to that Got extent, it. I think it is doable. It is like this, that sometimes you want to play on a ground where it's like a laboratory. So it may be useful to get this thing going in place like Gandhinagar, which is International Financial Services City, right, in offshore center, where there's sandbox regime, mm. you know. So when you have a sandbox regime, then government also feels comfortable that large public will not be taken on a ride. And you know what happened in India also, right? We gave that opinion, it was not illegal, it was revalidated by Supreme Court. We didn't between what happened, somebody took public on a ride. 
that is where the bank ban came mm. you know somebody had a ponzi scheme or whatever it is and so whatever happened happened that is why suddenly government got conscious that okay oh if you don't do something public will be after us and mm. that that's where they banned the banks from operating the accounts of crypto traders right mm. and um, uh, they did not ban crypto per se because it was not a money it was not currency it was not foreign exchange it did not fall in any of the definitions of rbis you know monetary system and therefore they had no power to regulate crypto you know now how do they do it so they had power to regulate banks so they said you will not deal in that but they could not tell that you know this crypto is illegal or otherwise because the law does not allow empower them and, 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 this whole thing happened and is looking forward then um so, you know there have been some news articles i know usually these are all wrong but there's been some information around oh maybe bitcoin might uh be made kind of illegal banned. in the future do you think that's a real threat or is that um like and, and if so how can the the community you know work against it obviously uh, yeah. or or is it more just something in the news no no i think some people try to make the statement and it might have been but two situations can they ban it probably to ban they will have to change the law number two so passing a legislation is one thing second even if the law is passed in our opinion that would be violative of the fundamental rights to carry on business or profession and other rights that are freedom of speech and expression etc you know concerning the crypto so as soon as law is introduced okay there'll be writ petition just as we went for writ petition when the bank ban was put right so if the ban crypto will have to will again go to the uh supreme court or court get injunction and take it forward you know so it, in india fortunately there is a legal system which is fairly independent and at the same time um, you know if it is any law is violative of certain fundamental rights you can challenge their validity in the court of law and we are reasonably clear that we'll be able to challenge it so i don't think that would happen on the contrary my gut feel is that now the new generation that is coming up would be more supportive of trying to find out what is good about it they will perhaps look at whether can we regulate in a way that public is not harmed that's all so long as government is convinced of that they say that their perception matters and uh, we have to dispel any apprehension that may be going along with uh, crypto and we, that's why we continuously educate in fact we have a session even in the coming week with some regulators in gift city about this crypto and all that thing and now it has become easier because we are able to simply say look here supreme court has said it's not illegal so to start with it becomes a good they also feel comfortable the supreme court has said it's not illegal right so they are more receptive to hearing than what can we do and how can we protect public interest that's it beautiful so i don't think you need to worry too much about ban yeah mm 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 okay okay well well nisha listen uh, i was going to say anything else you want to share before i let you go and like i said i i mean i i, I can't describe how much respect i have for you how much um I, yeah i just I, i have nothing but respect for you nisha then and you know you've been in the trenches you've led the way and not only for our industry for for so many other industries as well and you know it's just uh, but if any general questions uh, nisha i mean any comments rather in terms of like how to maybe live a life of significance and and do good work because uh i haven't met many people like you no i think i would only say one thing let's come together and shape the world that we want mm you know so we never do it to, alone so we say we would like to change the world together for the better together right so i think yeah whatever happened happened it is again with the support of people like you and many other people who individually did but i think that i strongly suggest that we set up an association or institution or something 
okay body that represents and truly represents the interest of this uh, crypto world and uh, for the benefit of the people okay and see how we can keep the bad elements outside bad actors you know what you call so mm -hmm. the system if and my approach always has been on self regulation because if you don't behave yourself if you do not regulate yourself you know then somebody else will come from outside and try to regulate you then there is a conflict but so long as you understand your responsibility and benefit the public uh, public will be supporting you who supported uber public said we mm. want them right airbnb is public with ones so the the case studies say the same thing that this new age entrepreneurs so are called regulatory entrepreneurs it is it is not the lobbyist who actually lobby it is the public at large which lobbies they say we want we want so government then understand their aspiration and therefore they are you know do whatever they need to by the way you and shared really done good job. You shared that with me, mm -hmm. that, that case study. You shared it with me. Yeah. And so if you have a link yeah. that you want to Got send it. through Surreal, I can put it in, you know, I can share it with, with everyone because I think it's, it was one of the most, uh, yeah, insightful documents yeah, I've yeah. ever read. Got it. Got it. And, you know, and there's this, there's right. this, like you have, exactly. you, you know, in, in, in Nishit, you have like this world of like laws and then there's what is enforced right and that that circle is obviously much smaller than what is all of the the laws and and uber and some of these guys they kind of operate in this area right where it doesn't it's not realistic for for governments necessarily go out there and regulate them and 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 enforce them and and put them in trouble because they're serving a public good at large and so but 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 balancing that act and and walking that tightrope as an entrepreneur is very very challenging i'm not gonna lie and and so it's uh you know it's almost like elon musk's famous quote is it's like chewing glass and staring into the abyss <laughs> it can feel yeah, a little absolutely. bit like that um, but you know yeah even for uber uber it has not been easy mm. because i think what was government's position initially that look at all these taxi drivers are getting losing their jobs so they're getting unemployed Okay, they will be unemployed. At least perception was that there'll be no. What will they do? So, in other context, it was also, uh, according to some people, it was not good for society. Also, many people get unemployed with this technology. But what they found, there are so many new people who got employed. So when that realization dawned, the things began to change. And also, I think Uber had provided for, uh, I think, um, uh, uh, penalties venture capital is funded penalties and because they estimated that if government goes after them and something goes wrong i believe you know they will need some funding for litigation they will need some funding for paying temporary penalties and stuff like that so in fact you know the 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 you know so they also went through their own problems you know it is not like rentals for example if Airbnb is outside the rental market, you know, or the government regulations. Government is concerned. But when they found the way, both conceptually it was interesting and good, and actually implementation also it benefited a lot more people. So same way, I think we have to demonstrate some case studies as to how exactly people have been benefiting from this decentralized, uh, if you want to call currency or asset or whatever it is, you know. So I think constantly our uh, effort should be to show that we are one together in the community. And number two, that we are constantly working for the benefit of the community. If we can play between these two uh, ends, you know, I don't think any government would have interest in um, just banning it for the sake of banning. There will be always pressures from different you know, central banks, so there'll be pressures from different lobbies and whatever it is, you know, or in banks perhaps, or whosoever is intermediary making profit out of it. Okay, but that's the way of life, you know.
when you change the world there will always be something shaken up you know in india there's been a lot Sorry, of talk yeah, there's been a nishi there's been a lot of talk about uh, doing blockchain bitcoin is bad but blockchain is good do you think the regulators <laughs> and politicians are missing something there um and, and, and you know this also the second part of that question is around like you know a lot of rupees dollars not rupees but dollars are finding themselves on the blockchain right tether uh i mean most of the volume now are actually like things like that uh that sit on the bitcoin blockchain or ethereum blockchain but they are tied to the us dollar just curious on those two questions do you do you think that that's going to be yeah what are your thoughts on that no i think uh, um we have been consistently educating everyone including regulators and others that for a good existence of blockchain public blockchain in particular it will not exist unless there is crypto it's a by product and um, if you do not have that if you are not rewarding nobody will solve the problem okay so for the existence of the you know blockchain itself to develop that you need some system which is this you know crypto and that i think they are beginning to understand but more we talk about it more people realize that and a lot of people just don't realize that you know they think that no we like blockchain but we don't like crypto you know it's like you know you say we like airline but don't like loyalty points or you know uh, hotels we don't like loyalty points and stuff like that So and I, that that was one of the ways in which I explained to Supreme Court that ultimately uh, these are like loyalty points. The loyalty market, if you see loyalty point market, is the is the single largest in some ways financial markets outside the regulatory framework. You look at today when your loyalty points earn, you can buy hotel rooms, you can fly ticket, uh, air ticket, you can. have silverware even american express cards you take uh, utensils or gifts or thousands of things just by buying you use them just like any other currency to buy it or to get those kind of an exchange but those points are not considered as part of monetary system okay and they are not even in the tax net so what is the you know nature of that and how it is right so one thing is clear that the loyalty points are not money correct but you can still buy say like barter system which is not illegal and that uh, main point so i think uh, that's why education is a very critical part and i think as i said that if we can uh, again and again i say that you know today 7 8 years we have operated you know without a very coherent support of the industry industry players individually have come forward and done it but we really need to have a strong industry body and uh, which even we can create good papers you got thought leaders you can bring people around you know it lends more credibility you know we, as you said we stick our neck out when things happen and for long period of time you know and we also have our own reputational issue because people think are we associating with wrong people or who are these people and all the thing but we were convinced that legally this was not wrong so we continuously support it but i believe time has come and when things are going if you are not going to get together uh, it will be very difficult to bring people together when anything that is uh, not right or you know wrong time you know, that that would be okay awesome so today i think mm Sorry, go I ahead. Think, I, I think the, no today popularity for crypto is going up. Okay, so industry people must be making hopefully some money as well, and um, they should try to see that they use that for nurturing and development of the industry further, for the benefit of the people. Okay. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. So if there's like entrepreneurs out there who are looking to make moves into India, and there are right, there are there are big companies now. Uh, Nisreel uh, and I were talking about this earlier. Initiate now. There's you know Binance and and all these companies that are making moves in yeah. India. 
And so if, if people, and these companies are making, I think they're announcing billions of dollars a year that they're earning. Yeah. Yeah. They should be, they should be, I think, I mean, who am I to say, but I think they should be helping and funding, you know, the, these types of associations and, and the work that you guys do, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, we, we live in a, a world of, of rules and, um, and we need to understand what those rules are and we need to be able to kind of impact change in a positive way. And the only way to do that is, is at least I know is, again, it, it was a bit of serendipity, maybe not, but uh, I'm so happy that, 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 our, that our paths crossed because I've learned you know, so much about, uh, about the world. <laughs> and you know, and we've been, we've been you know, in, in, like, uh, with, in front of politicians and regulators. And I know you've done like countless hours of, of not just in the limelight, but behind kind of the scenes and, and work to, to ensure that, that this technology you know, sees the light of day and it doesn't get you know, moved away into the dark. So, so anyway, so from the community, you know, I you thank right, you so much for everything. No, you are absolutely right. I think entire Supreme Court case, which is highest court in the nation, you know, we had put so much of time. It's almost pro bono. It went, you know, very mm. little, of course, you know, went support a little bit, but otherwise, you know, so industry did not come forward so much. We took on ourselves with, of course, some players like Unocoin and others, but it's very hard to spend so much of time, you know. Fortunately, mm. things have worked out, and because we are all together, we think we are, you know, together. But uh, I would strongly recommend that, you know, it's very difficult to sustain it over a longer period of time. You know, yeah. The boat has and, come all and, the way to the shore, and, on the shore. And, 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 you know, Nishit, some people have the attitude, like, I'll just wait and watch. I'll let other people yeah. carve the way forward. And then once the path is cleared, I'll, I'll jump in. What do you say to those yeah, people? Okay. Well, I think we don't blame them sometimes because, you know, they think, okay, let us wait and watch and they don't mm. know what would happen. But once had we, once it has been demonstrated, at least now they should come on board. Mm. You know, I would not take any offense. Okay, they did not come because people have different ways of thinking. They don't know what will happen, what will not mm. happen. And at a point of time... Uh, Again, Bitcoins were low end and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know whether people are making money or not. They could not invest whatever it is. But now that it's on the track, but for, 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 you know, for the further growth and development of the industry, they have to invest. And, and, and you know, like maybe, I mean, we talked about this in the past, but maybe this is a good time to do it is, I don't know if, we, if we're allowed to do it, but we just set up a Bitcoin address for, for, you know, I don't know, this initiative or whatever it is and, and really just start, you know, Unocoin alone has a million and a half customers, you know, many of them have been with us for many years, yeah. you know, and one thing I'm on a mission to do now is share these stories of people like you and the Harish and, you know, all the, the sattvic, everything that, that these guys have done and, mm. and you guys have done. And you're right. Now it's not even like a question mark. We've kind of shown, we've shown the playbook. We've shown that it's possible, but, you know, it can't just be a handful of people. We need more help, um, you know, from, again, from, from people who are benefiting. You know, I know a lot of uh, global exchanges that even have customers in India and, you know, and, and they don't necessarily yeah. partake in, in kind of uh, the upside or, or the building of this path. Okay, so very, very, uh, that's great. Yeah. So I don't know, any, okay. anything else you want to share? Or is that, uh, is that mostly? No. Okay, well, thank you so no, much absolutely. for your time. It's I really great pleasure talking to you, Sunny, always. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, I and Suril both thank uh, you, your audience, and uh, let's change the world for the better together. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Nothing but love and respect for Thank you. you. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, sir. That was, uh, that was awesome, man. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice little treat. Uh, you know, I'm sure people will really enjoy yeah. that. And uh, yeah, that was awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, but well, well, but yeah, man. Well, where, where were we? Where were we? You know, I, I mean, you know, despite where we were, one thing I wanted to talk to you about, if you don't, I mean, we can. By the way, we can keep going down the Bitcoin thing. But I was curious to ask you a little sure. bit about. I just you, I you, I kind of put your name into YouTube, and and the, there's a video that came up, 
and you were talking about some stuff. I don't know if that's even something you want to talk about or maybe not, but you talked about anxiety and depression and it was in a book you wrote or your friend wrote or what you know what I'm talking about? Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. About yeah, a year ago, maybe. Remember it. Mm. Yeah, so, so it was my cousin. Uh, he wrote a book and uh, so uh, he told me to come and just give some kind of a talk uh, at uh, his uh, launch of the book. And uh, I remembered him from my childhood days when uh, he was one of the first people who had come across who had depression, you know, and uh, uh, he overcame all of that. And then he's written this book, which is a, about positivity and, you know, how to live a positive life. And that's what he's focusing his whole life on. Now. He runs marathons and things like that. And even personally, I had gone through a, dip- a bout of depression uh, in the mid to early 2000s, you know. And so, so I just decided that I'd speak about that at the event rather than, you know, uh, I kind of combined it with... Uh, uh, a little bit of poetry that I write and kind of just went out there. It was pretty impromptu. It was not planned or anything. So I, I just felt I was just I just felt it in the moment to speak it, and so I spoke it. You know, and I didn't think two three times about it. I just went up there and I prepped up a bit before you know speaking, but nothing. You know, it was not. It was not on top. I mean, it just came out from the top of my head. I I, I bring it up because, um, I, I think a lot about anxiety, and I, I I think it's some. I think it's one of those things, kind of like money. You know what I mean? It's like everybody thinks about it. <laughs> um, everybody, you know, in one case wants more of it, in the other case maybe less of it. Are confused by it. They have a relationship with it, but don't really understand that. And it's like, and, and I don't know. And I feel like, I mean, I, I get anxious, obviously, like I'm a human being, but I feel like I've now crafted little hacks that help me overcome anxiety, you know? And so I was curious to know if you have, certain hacks or how do you because you know i don't think i think that's part of the human condition right Right. like we're always going to feel anxious about like whether it's dying or some girl (laughs) not liking you enough or whatever right but but what is what is what what, but yeah what's uh i don't know curious what's what like just more on a visceral level like what's your relationship with anxiety so i mean uh i have i've not had any kind of anxiety situation but i've been on some anxiety medications in the past and uh, somehow now i am able to i i've found certain hacks which uh, which is a, has a lot to do with patience which has a lot to do with patience and writing my poetry for example like and painting you know uh, that has helped me overcome a lot of anxiety issues. Uh, poetry writing has been probably far, by far the most helpful. And by poetry, I don't mean formal poetry. I mean, I just write words and it reads like a poem. You know, it's not a formal thing. Like, I don't use any kind of prepositions or full stops and stuff like that. I just write sentence after sentence, you know, and kind of very, you know, just what I was on my mind, I just write it, you know. That has been one of the greatest hacks I've had for anxiety, you know, and other than that, like... Hey, do you have a process around that? I, 
Do you have a process around that in the sense that, like, do you use a notebook and pen? Do you use, uh, do you write it in, like, uh, something no, electronic? I, 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 use, I use my phone. Yeah, I write Your it on iPhone. my phone. Got it, got it, got it. Cool. Yeah. O- originally, it used to be the Blackberry. So my parents used to call me the Blackberry poet. But then I shifted to iPhone. So. The Blackberry poet. You know, that's a Canadian company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I brought it. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that. I sometimes think about it. I'm like, man, Canada could have been yeah. the shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, now now the new one is Shopify. Shopify is a Canadian company Shopify. too. Shopify. Yeah, 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 I, I saw this quote yeah. the other day. Toby, the, the CEO, was like, uh, if Amazon is the empire, he's like, we're arming the rebels. <laughs> I thought that was such a cool, uh, <laughs> such a wow. cool quote. Yeah. I was like, man, yeah, but I love it. I love it. And you know, Shopify yeah. is officially the biggest company in Canada. It's no longer the banks. It's like the the top five banks were always kind of the dominant oh, wow. and oil. I think I've never used it. I, it's like, dude, I, if you want to sell your t-shirts, used. anything you want to sell, you uh-huh. can use Shopify. I should work for them. <laughs> I should get like a job there. Right? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> Hey, dude, what, anything else you want to cover? Anything? I mean, look, like we talked about, I mean, a little bit about your story, not really your backstory, backstory, but, you know, you started with kind of the, the Bitcoin stuff. Um, but, you know, right. another thing, another topic that I'm trying to kind of cover and to talk about is like kind of like Bitcoin and art, right? Um, like I, I, I released a like a, a like a like a like just it was literally over one sunday i think i made it on my iphone but i like made all these like songs about bitcoin like 15 or 16 songs and i released it and to this day i'll right. like listen to those beats and some people joke about it and people be like oh you should make and it was literally right. a freaking joke but it just strikes me how like with music with documentaries with books with whatever it's like you can yeah. You like do it and then it just gives forever you know what it means like so i was so curious like i know you were making so, some documentaries so like what's what's your relationship with art been like yeah general? so i made a documentary about a former militant in kashmir and it's about snowboarding in kashmir yeah, yeah i remember and, hearing about uh, this yeah and it's ready it's it's already it got selected at the iran international documentary festival hey hey, hey. Uh, yeah bit connect okay no i'm kidding for- that's that's pretty <laughs> crazy dude that's that's insane congratulations yeah so i mean it's available to, for you to watch freely on youtube it's called iron khan iron khan okay you know iron man mm-hmm. I, iron khan yeah and uh, I made that, and then uh, and and obviously in the beginning when I was doing the whole project, I did use a Bitcoin to to some of the transactions. So it does have a little bit of a Bitcoin in it, not too much, but you know, uh, I had to make a small payment to one of my guys who was working on the film, and I did it through Bitcoin. And uh, uh, so, and it was partly funded with my Bitcoin, you know. And uh, after that, I uh, there was one more thing I did uh, with a with a Bitcoin. I I had oh yeah. So after the you 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 know there was this big terrorist attack in in, in Bombay in two thousand and eight, twenty six eleven. Where the where the Jewish center was attacked, and a rabbi was killed over there. And uh, recently, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Israel was visiting India, and the brother of the rabbi wanted to visit India, and mm. he was like, you know, how to and and I wanted to, so I I called in my own crew from I called in one of my journalist friends. Uh, I called him and then they were on the flight with, on the same flight as the, there was this little boy who survived the attack who was coming into India. Hmm. So, so I gave a Bitcoin and to the rabbi and, you know, so I've done a lot of charitable kind of work with my Bitcoins Hmm. and that's what has, that's what got me even more excited about it. That, you know, it's so easy. It's so convenient. Why aren't we using it, you know, on in our daily lives, you know? 
and uh, and then uh, now I'm making a documentary about the Jewish population in Mumbai. It's called the Mumbai Jews, which is underwear, which is in the editing room. Uh, that doesn't have too much of a Bitcoin connection because, you know, I had some f dollars by then. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, so I, I, so, so now I'm like, I'm, I'm made these two documentaries, you know, and, uh, I, I mean, for me, Bitcoin is itself a work of art, you know. When I think of a Bitcoin, I think of, when I read the white paper, for example, mm. it's a work of art. I mean, it's, I mean, the way it's written, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, even linguistically, it's, it's very precise, you know. It's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, you, you wouldn't expect a hardcore geek to be able to write something that's so, I mean, grammatically also, it's, it's pretty to the point, you know, it's, I mean, I found it quite, you know, even though the technical side was the broad message that Satoshi or the group of Satoshis or whoever it is was trying to bring out, it comes out so succinctly and so clearly in this white paper. And, you know, I mean, I, I, when I talk about the white paper, you know, peop, I mean, I always get fascinated by the language, you know, like, how is it? It matches, yes, the mathematics matching is one thing, but even the language itself, I mean, I've been trying to decipher it and trying to see from which part of the world it comes from, but it's almost too perfect, you know, it's the English. And, uh, and then when you look at the translations, they are also like, I mean, they it's easy to translate because it's written so precisely, you know? I mean, it's been translated in almost, I don't know how many languages now, you know? Hey, hey, it's so surreal. So, it, it makes... Yeah, I know, no, no, no I, I find your fascination with it fascinating because uh, I, I'm like the same way as you, right? It's almost like, ah, it's like, well, I didn't believe in God <laughs> until now. Ah. <laughs> but I have a question for you. But what about since then? Like, there's so many white papers, dude. You want a white paper? I'll give you a white paper. There's so many white papers. So how yeah, come, but, what is it about but, that white paper? I think after I read that white paper, I mean, I think my standards I mean, I, I'm always comparing it. How does it match up to the Bitcoin white paper? You know, how how clear how clear is the thought process in these other white papers, and how but and because Bitcoin, I've seen it being executed as a white paper. You know, it has it, it has given you steps in how X Y Z everything will go, and it was not. There was no marketing budget on Bitcoin, per se. While all these other white papers, they spend a ton of money on just marketing it, you know. And if I find a white paper somewhere, you know, in the on in the web somewhere, just lying there, then I would read it. But when someone's just selling me a white giving me a white paper because they are selling me a token. It's a different mind that I use, you know? So for me, it's more, uh, I mean, I need to believe, I mean, the Bitcoin white paper actually makes you believe in Bitcoin, right? And to be able to believe at a level, you know, and for some people, it's at the very first instant they read it, they believers you know but other white papers it's not 
they are not written in that fashion so so let's talk about the second biggest why, one you know, which is wait, what's the second biggest one now after bitcoin probably ethereum right so so how that is an amazing name it's, it's like think how sexy that sounds ethereum <laughs> 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 you know, and even sexier co-founder, a founder. Yeah, so why why doesn't that catch your attention, but, dude? Uh, I, I mean, I I think that that it's it's like gold and silver, right? Like if someone puts up ounce of gold versus an ounce of silver, and you've already, you know used gold more i mean yeah some people are attracted to silver for whatever reasons but you you saw gold first so once i saw the bitcoin white paper i mean mm. i i became a bitcoin maximalist almost you know so I, I i just became lazy to read any more white papers you know hmm. that's one part of it and uh uh and I kept on hearing about it, you know, like people tell, talking to me about Cardano, Monero, whole mm. bunch of white papers, you know, there's, now there are thousands. But the Bitcoin white paper was just, it just laid the foundation for all these other white papers. And most of these other white papers, I, I look at them as derivatives of the Bitcoin Satoshi white paper, mm. you know, then the concept is, I mean, because the Bitcoin white paper has a lot of philosophical underpinnings, you know, and mm -hmm. the fact that it's, it was just thrown out in the open without any consideration of what's going to happen next, you know, what's, how much, how many tokens am I going to, it was just thrown out there, you know, unlike the other white papers, which are, you know, more systematic, more, you know, there's a timeline, there is, I think on the Bitcoin white paper, the reason why Bitcoin just grew to what it has grown is because it was kept just freely in open source for anyone to enter, anyone to do whatever they want with it. And that's how I feel Bitcoin really became the cryptocurrency, right? And the other currencies are there, but it's it's like you have the US dollar and then you have the euro. Or, you know, you have gold and you have silver. And you have... So, Bitcoin becomes, for me, in my opinion, it becomes... It, I mean, for some people, it may be like, oh, no, it's you're too maximalist with Bitcoin. But for me, it's convenience because I understood it, whatever little I understood of it, I still have to understand a lot of it. So while I'm still trying to understand Bitcoin, I don't want to confuse myself with the other altcoin universe, you know? And, uh, and because I don't want to do that, uh, I mean, I would go out there and just look at some token and I just buy it, you know, just for the heck of owning it. But I don't know its use or utility, you know, because now there's so such a wide variety of things that are happening. There's the ICO boom, then you had the STO boom, then you have, now you have decentralized finance, you have a whole bunch of things happening, you know, and to keep up. So I, I personally don't want to lose focus on Bitcoin. So I'm only sticking to Bitcoin. You know, uh, because that's that's the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, no. I yeah. I definitely feel that. So 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 you are so you're like your dad said. You're the reason that he took it seriously. So so I guess what what was it though that you saw in it? Super, you know, like I mean, you speak about it as if though, you know, is finding God. But like what what. Uh, <laughs> What was it though? Was it just uh, just the fact that did you, did you see a lot of like uh, 
I don't know. Did you have a lot of questions around money before discovering it? Or was it something around power? Or was it just like the open source? Or For, 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 for me, it was the whole, yeah, the open source and the whole cypherpunk related, you know, the whole, because I've always had a fascination for the hacker community and, you know, the people who, uh, like the which is the, the crypto anarchists and stuff like that i was very much attracted to that community never really had a head on interaction with them but i would read up a lot on you know on the net about them i would follow a lot of the cypherpunk movements and then i you know i i even started supporting julian assange and those guys you know and i saw that the crypto Bitcoin had become the currency for all of that as well, you know? So that's why for me, uh, Bitcoin became the liberator, you know? And with the, I, 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 I could actually see the shift of power taking place based on the Bitcoin headlines, you know, the kind of news that would first come up out of Bitcoin would be all negative. They'd be like, oh, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's, uh, you know, it's for drug dealers. It's for, you know, you know, all the other nasty things that have been said about Bitcoins. And then over a period, I started seeing this needle shift, you know, getting more and more and more and more and more favorable. And that's when I realized that there is a power shift taking place, you know? And uh, and then boom, 2020, I see Brock Pierce contesting as a presidential candidate in the US elections. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know? Just get that... real. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, and I'm like, <laughs> Brock is, you know, he's contesting for the U.S. presidential, you know, like, do, do, you know, everyone thought it would be McAfee who was. Do, do you know who, who the second, big, yeah, right, yeah. McAfee was running, running. Did you know, I heard that the yeah. second <laughs> biggest donor for Biden was that Sam guy from FTX, like one of the biggest Bitcoin exchanges now. Okay. Like the one that like went from zero <laughs> to like, you know, crazy or whatever in yeah. like two years. Um, so yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, seeing this whole transition of power, like going from people to technology, you know, it, it, it's like the trust has moved, you know, and trust, people don't trust people anymore, but they trust technology more than they trust people. And the people behind and and the and they and they're scared of people who build this technology you know mm -hmm. so like mostly if you if you see like society today it's like you you say that you know like uh i mean i i'd gone on this uh in this one conference and i told uh you know, like every conference you go about, which is about security systems or anything, hackers mm. are like the bad guys, you know? And so I took a stance at one of these conferences and I said that, you know, you should treat hackers like lawyers, you know, the same respect you give lawyers, you should give to a hacker. Like, like a lawyer bends and breaks the law in favor of his client. And a hacker does the same thing with mathematical code. So, you know, he understands the code, so he's able to bend it and use it in his favor. So, and he uses it just like a lawyer uses the law in his favor, right? So why, why, why are you ostracizing hackers and why are you putting lawyers on a pedestal? You should give them the same respect because, you know, as far as technology goes, as far as computer goes, as far as 
on this new AI stuff that's going to come out, it's going to be that geek, that nerd, that hacker who is going in and, you know, demystifying the whole thing and remystifying it. That's going to be the most critical uh, component or player in the whole new world that we live in, you know, like, you know, video conferences has become such a normal thing, but you don't realize how much bandwidth it takes. And some time back, it was like super expensive to do a video call like this, you know, and now it's like free, almost free. <laughs> right. And then hopefully Bitcoin so, will bring yeah. about, yeah, a similar type of, you know, revolution. And it kind of is already, but exactly. um but, but I, I remember actually that was when you say those the, when you say that I remember so, like you said that to me like before we had even met your dad about you know the importance <laughs> of you know uh, of being cognizant of the fact that you know it's, it's important to not break the law right it's important to understand it learn yeah. it and then bend it in the direction that you know you're hoping to go yeah. but yeah. but that was I thought very insightful and then then, then your, your dad even brought up this like regulatory entrepreneurship that that white paper I don't know if you have a link to it or whatever yeah. but if you can send it over I'd love to share that with with people because I remember reading that, that's not private right that was like a like a public white paper or something yeah it's a, pub, it's a public it's a public yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. but um i'll what's happened to you um okay so we talked a little bit of your story your project so right now did you already cover that a little bit or is there something that you're you're that's front and center you talked a little bit about you know the 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 movie right. you made you talked about you know some of your um yeah. but what's the thing that's like kind of front and center right now for you right now right now Chilling like a villain. Nothing. I'm just chilling. Love like it. Villain. Love it. Do that. That's the best. Just, that's like. <laughs> just, just, I, I, I just, I've gained a lot of weight, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I wake up. I, I, I don't even watch Netflix anymore. I don't even watch TV anymore. I I just listen to music all day and mm. you know, uh, and then sit in on some conference calls with my dad, you know. Mm. But I but uh, work wise, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to find my purpose right now. You know, I'm in that mode where I want to find a purpose, mm. and because I've done a lot of things already. So, but they were just like, they just came to me, you know, like without, I mean, I had a general idea of what I was doing, mm. but I didn't have a concentrated purpose, you know? So now I'm in the process of finding that one purpose, you know, because now, like earlier, I used to be very much excited about politics and business and now that stuff just doesn't do anything for me, you know, like looking at the Bitcoin price go up and down. I mean, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's okay. You know, it's uh, it's a part of the evolution. And uh, now I'm, I'm trying to find something that can just captivate my attention, you know, like something that that's, because getting politically active, I did get a little bit political, but then that fizzled out. It didn't last for too long. Then with Bitcoin, I'm passionate, you know, I already, but now Bitcoin has reached where it's supposed to, you know, where I feel satisfied that, okay, you know, now, you know, it's at a good 19, whatever it is, you know, and I'm, I'm quite happy with what it is, you know, like from where I saw it to <laughs> where it's come. I mean, I'm like, wow, you know, I mean, yeah, for the newbies, it might be, oh, it's, you know, not growing and stuff like that. But uh, I'm like, dude, you have no idea how much it's growing, you know, 
I mean, if you take the entire market capitalization of all the cryptocurrencies combined today, along with Bitcoin, you know, it's it's pretty big. Mm. And it's becoming, I mean, it's now I'm seeing the old finance guys coming into the crypto space trying to understand it. And for me, it's getting a little bit back I mean, it's getting the elements. The casualness is going to slowly disappear. And I hope the suits don't come back. You know? <laughs> because that's that's what really got me excited about crypto was that, you know, it was so casual. Mm. You know, I mean, you could just go up and do a meetup and just talk to people and, you know, mm. anyone, nobody cared who you were and Everyone was just talking. But now that institutions are coming in, they're going to bring in, yeah, they will be bringing in the capital, but they'll be also bringing in their culture along with it, you know? So, like, while it's a great thing, but, you know, it, it's going to change. It's it's going to, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's like, I hope it doesn't become a corporate world again, you know, because I, when, for me, Bitcoin and the whole crypto scene was an escape from the corporate culture and the status quo and all of those things. And once it reaches a certain level, I hope that crypto stay, because that's the, un it stays, you know, what it is, you know, like, you know, a bunch of punks and geeks who are just playing around with technology. That's what, you know, that's what worries me. And that's what's got me a little, you know, because now I see all these blocks, I go for all these blockchain events and I've got a bamboo wool uh, jacket which I got made by Brooks Brothers and I you know they told me to write what name I wanted and I've written Satoshi Nakamoto in the jacket so, I, <laughs> so every time I go to a conference I'm wearing a Satoshi Nakamoto jacket and I just leave it and I just walk around and people are just like who is this guy you know <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, so, you know, I just want that whole, that free thinking, you know, that not worrying about giving a high return or, you know, I mean, Bitcoin has done what it had to do. You know, it, it has disrupted, you know, the disruption has already been done and now you can't stop it, you know. So that's what, but I just don't want the culture to go away you know the whole casualness of to, 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 to those world. who to those who say bitcoin will be made illegal in india let's say to start with what do you say to that if it's illegal it's illegal you know it's there are so many things that are illegal and still available <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so it, it'll have you know <laughs> hey okay so let, let's move on let's move on okay so what about that last question around the the what's what was i gonna say you maybe lose my train of thought okay anything any truth you believe that others in bitcoin would disagree with you on uh any truth that i believe in that the bitcoiners would disagree uh Ethereum will never be Bitcoin. Ethereum will never be Bitcoin. Actually, most Bitcoiners might agree with you on that statement. <laughs> but okay, okay, Ethereum will never be Bitcoin. Why? Why? Why would? Why do you say that? Uh, just because uh, I I personally feel that uh, it's uh, I mean. I have a soft spot for Bitcoin, you know. I don't know much about Ethereum. And the fact that I don't know much about Ethereum makes it not a Bitcoin for me, you know. 
because I refuse, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, you know, I just stay to Bitcoin, you know, let's yeah. keep it simple, you know, we don't, you know, if you have these thousands of cryptos which are coming out every day, you know, I mean, it's a great thing, it's fun, yeah, but, you know, I'm, my ship just gets attracted to Bitcoin. So, I mean, there are plenty of fish in the sea to fish from, but, you know, not all of them are good fish. And Bitcoin is a whale, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful one at that. Hey, man, uh, okay, you mentioned your documentary. People can find it on YouTube. Uh, any, 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 where else can people... Yeah like kind of follow your train of thought are you are you pretty available or do you kind of stay under a rock mostly lately i have gone a little bit quiet mm. you know back in the day i used to be very hyperactive on facebook and stuff like that uh, but mostly on facebook uh twitter i once in a while not too often but uh, Facebook, you can find me, you know, I, now I, I don't post, I'm not as funny as I used to be, you know, uh, but, but, but I post right, right now. It's just this year. I, I don't know. I mean, inside I'm laughing, but <laughs> when I'm writing, I'm not able to be funny. <laughs> so I, I write all these, uh, positive thinking stuff but i'm thinking like what kind of a jerk am i you know like <laughs> hey are you into meditation i tried i do it once in a while but you know it it just puts me to sleep and uh, i think sleep <laughs> is the best form of meditation <laughs> Oh, dude. Okay, this was fun, man. This is good, great, great catching up. I, yeah. I think I've already outstayed my my welcome here. I feel, uh, <laughs> wow, we're almost like uh, inching up on two hours here. Well, dude, this has been fascinating, man. We even got yeah. a little sneak peek and got your dad uh, to to comment on some stuff. That was pretty sweet. Uh, well, with that, yeah. I don't know, man. I got I got nothing else for you. That's we should do this again. I mean, we, we, I mean today was kind of a bit okay. formulaic. You know, I wanted to capture your story and stuff like yeah. that, but I, we could riff on on anything. Um, okay, thank yeah, you, Israel. Yeah, yeah. Really, really appreciate it, man. Okay. okay All right, man. let me.